Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today I'm going to have a very simple example of how to define and apply styles to the visual elements of your WPF application. I'm going to start with a very simple application as a stack panel and just two text blocks, one that says hello and the other that says world. If we go ahead and run this application, we see it's just simply hello and world up in the top left corner. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to create a style to change some of the properties of the first text box, the first text block with the with the text hello in it. So I'm going to create a style and I'm gonna I'm gonna apply it to this text block. So we'll say style equals and we'll reference a static resource and we'll reference a resource called hello style. And you can see right away we're getting a blue underline from the editor in Visual Studio and what it's telling us is that the resource hello style could not be resolved. So we're telling WPF that there should be a style with a key called hello style that should be accessible and it's telling us that it can't find it. And that's because we haven't defined it yet. So let's go up to the window element and create a resources section and this is where we'll store our style. So inside the resources I'm going to create a style object and I'm going to give it a key of hello style. Now the blue underline goes away and the style resource can be resolved and if we press F5 and run this now the application runs correctly, nothing blows up at runtime, nothing's changed because we haven't added any, any properties to our style but it is resolving the style correctly. So within the style now, what we can do is we can create setters. And the setters are, the, are a way for us to set attributes on the element that the style is applied to. So a setter has two, two pieces to it. The first is the property, which is which, which property on the target object do you want to set. So let's say I want to set the font size. And the second part of it is the value. And the value here is what we want the attribute value to be. So let's say we want it to be font size 20. And then we'll go ahead and close the tag. Now you'll notice what happens here is that the property uh, under, gets underlined and says, hey, the property font size was not found in type framework element. So that seems a bit odd because we're applying the style to a text block, which isn't a framework element. It's, it's a specific type of framework element called text block. But what this is telling us is that the style we've defined doesn't have a target type on it. It just has a key. So, so WPF can't be sure what element that this style is applied to. So in order for IntelliSense to work and for this, this to be happy, we'll go ahead and specify the target type of our style. And we can say this style should only be applied to text blocks. Now the setters in here, the IntelliSense will be for properties that are available to text blocks. So now you can see font size will show up. And we can also we can add another setter to set a different property. We can say setter property and we can say um, font weight and the value. And now you can see the value in IntelliSense is matched to the property and it knows that it's all part of the text block so you get a nicer experience overall. And we'll set that equal to bold. And now when we press F5 and run this, you'll see that the first text block is a larger font size and it's set to bold because the style is being applied to it. If you're familiar with uh, HTML and CSS, then this, this approach should be somewhat similar to you. Uh, it should feel a little familiar in that you can have a style object that lives outside of the target element and sets some of the properties for the element that it's applied to. And now we can share these styles. So we can say style hello style and we can actually apply it to the world text block and let's actually rename this now since we're reusing it let's call this just the text block style and we'll use that same key there and we'll go ahead and change the key up in the style object now we're using the same style on two different text blocks and they're gonna get these two properties the font size and font weight both applied to them the same so now when you run it it's hello and world they're both inheriting those properties and getting them set from the shared style. Now, these are what this is. This text block style is what's known as an explicit style, and what that means is that we've provided a key on the style along with a target type. And when you do both of those, the only way that you can apply that style is to explicitly set the style attribute on a element that needs it. So again, if we remove the style attribute from the second text block and run this again, you'll see that only the first text block is applied to style because it's the only text block that is explicitly referencing the style by key. 
It would be nice if we wanted a common style, say, for all of our text blocks across our application. It'd be nice if we could, instead of specifying it on every single text block, if we could somehow specify it up in the style. And in order to do that, you create what's called an implicit style. So if we just delete the key, and we go down to these text blocks, and you would remove any explicit setting of the style, and now your style is target type text block, and that's it. There's no key. That means that it will implicitly be applied to all text blocks in the application that don't otherwise have a style. So now if we press F5, now you'd see both text blocks are given that implicit style and we didn't have to specify the key directly. Now there may be cases where you have an implicit text block style, but in one instance you want to have an override or a specific style applied. So we can still do that. So we'll create another style here. It'll be still target type text block, but now we'll give it a key and we'll call this the hello style again. And inside here, what we'll do is we'll say setter property and we'll set, say, the foreground and we'll set the foreground to, uh, let's say, Azure. Now, if we run this just as is, you'll see that we still get the implicit style applied to all of our text blocks but the explicit style is not applied anywhere because there's no text block that has that key applied to it. So what we'll do is we'll come back to our XAML and for the hello text block, we'll go ahead and say style is equal to the static resource and it's gonna be hello style. Now we'll go ahead and run this. And Azure here is probably actually too light for you to see, so let me let me change that to something that we can see. So we'll change that to green, run it again, and you'll see now the bottom text block is getting the implicit style with the larger font and the bold, and the top one now is getting the explicit style, which has just changed the foreground to green. And you'll notice that we're not getting the implicit style settings anymore. We're only getting the ones that are defined in the explicit style setter. We're not inheriting anything from implicit. We're overriding the implicit style with our explicit style, which only changes the uh, foreground to green. So if we wanted this explicit style, we may have to come, if we wanted it to have similar fonts, we could come in here and we could say the font size of this one uh, is also 20. And now when we close that tag, we'll go ahead and run it again. And now you can see we're getting no bold, but we're getting the font size 20 and we're getting the green on the hello and then the bold and the black and the the font size 20 on the bottom for world from the implicit style. So two ways that you can apply styles to your elements in WPF. One is to create an explicit style by specifying a key and a target type and then applying that style directly to an individual element by specifying the style attribute and pointing it at the keyed style. This is the explicit style setting or you can do an implicit style by creating a style with just a target type and no key and then any element with that target type and no explicit style setting on it will implicitly get this style the, the implicit style applied to it so target type no key and don't specify the style attribute in the element itself and it will have received that implicit style okay that's it for using styles in your WPF application